uh, a crazy thing like this happened uh, behind the gold lame curtain when it was down, where the audience could not see the craziness that was going on. For example, uh, one time, uh, Elvis and uh, some of his guards came to us, and well, they came to me specifically and says, Richard, would you do us a favor? And uh, would you stop by uh, a drugstore or someplace and get us some of those little small balloons, little, little small toy balloons, and bring them to us. You know, the, the type that you would put water into it and make a nice little water ball like this. You know, we're gonna have a, a water fight. And I said, okay, so the next day I brought the balloons and I gave them to uh, the guards and, oh, Lord, they were just giddy as hell. They were laughing and cracking up and, and thinking about what was going to be done. So um, eventually, uh, in between shows, they, they got the balloons ready. They filled them with water. And I must have bought like uh, three or four packs with about approximately 20, 25 balloons in each uh, little bag. And they filled them with water. Now, uh, they started downstairs in the basement and they would chase each other outside of the dressing room and they would throw balloons at each other. And th they would just get the hallway wet with water, but it didn't. It didn't just stay in the basement. They would run down uh, the hall to the opposite side, or even the side where we were, the guards and stuff were, run upstairs to the stage area, and they would continue throwing these balloons. Now, the comedian is standing outside on, on the other side of the Gold LeMay. Uh, curtain, but he could hear these tiny little footsteps that were going uh, across the stage, you know, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter across the stage and, you know, back and forth. And you could see, uh, uh, I was told that you could see the, the uh, comedian turn around and look at the curtain. <laughs> wonder what in the world was going on. Well, some of the balloons missed their intended um, hit area, and it would hit the the gold lame curtain. <laughs> and the curtain, for for any of you, any and all of you that may have been to the International slash Hilton showroom, remember that the the curtain was tremendously tall, and. Um, huge, 75, 80 feet tall, maybe even more, I don't know. But these balloons would hit the curtain and the curtain would just, you know, sway back and forth like this. You know, the comedian, and everybody is cracking up. And the comedian thought, you know, gosh, I didn't say anything funny. But then he'd look behind him and he'd see, and, and he'd listen to the, these footsteps running across the stage and the curtain going whoa, whoa, whoa. and he turned around and make some kind of a comment and uh, finish up his act. Well, of course the, uh, the stage hands were running around like crazy with mops and uh, those big long brooms with towels attached to them and sopping up all the water as fast as possible before the opening uh, uh, music came on and the curtain went up. So here they were going, just racing back and forth and cleaning up as, as fast as they could. So the craziness would stop, you know, and then they would get ready and the music would play, the curtain would go up and no nobody would be the wiser. The people out front were still wondering what the hell is going on. But that was the backstage stories of, of stuff that was going on. 
the craziness of uh, different things. There was one time where, um, well, during the escorts, when we would pass by hallways, offices, where employees were inside of these offices and couldn't leave their post to go to the employee's cafeteria, they would order from room service, which was free, and they would bring them trays on a cart. And whenever they finished their meal, they would put the cart outside in the hallway with napkins over it, showing that it was through and it could be taken away. Well, as we were coming down on the escort, Elvis and his group would look at these trays, you know, up, up in front of us, and they would run as fast as they could and try to get to the tray as fast as they, as fast as possible, to see if there were glasses of water or, or um, anything that would be wet, ketchup, mustard, anything like that. And they would uh, stick their, if it, it was a glass of water, they would stick their fingers in the glass and start uh, uh, trying to get the person next to them wet with water droplets and stuff like that. Then somebody would get brave enough and grab the glass instead and throw it on everybody or the, the intended person and get that person wet. Of course, we all got wet. And uh, they would continue on. And then, of course, there were the um, mustard packets and the, and the ketchup packets. And they would get them, roll them up, and smash them up, you know, try to get mustard or ketchup on the person and stuff like that. So uh, us in uniform, we, we kept our, our, our distance and tried to stay back as far as possible and let them do all the craziness. But we would get wet. And uh, there was another time where this one was really, really crazy. But uh, I can't remember if it was sunny or red, but they came outside and they says, where's the uh, fire hose? And we went, oh, God. He says, it's right down the hall. And he says, he says, uh, going, uh, going uh, uh, how many feet is it? I think it's 75 feet. He says, go and bring it to us. And then we're going, I said, Rick, we can't do that, you know. And he says, ah. So he'd run down, open up the fire case, and he'd take down all of the hose that was in the, uh, in the case, and he would bring it over to the, to the uh, uh, dressing room area. And he so said to us, he says, now you go down there, and when I yell, uh, turn it on, you turn the water on. And I'm going, oh, Lord. So me and the other guards, we knew what was coming, so we didn't want to get wet. So all of us went up down to the, uh, to the, cave, to the fire case. And they all, uh, somebody started out of the dressing room, and he said, turn it on! So we turned on the hose, and you could see the water going through the hose, and just, it was like a two, two and a half inch hose, fire hose. And out come the other end, and they're just spraying each other, you know, and fighting to get the, 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 the brass uh, nozzle on the hose, and they were, oh, you know, just fighting for possession of it. And uh, at that time, uh, if any of you remember back that far, Emilio, who was the main maitre d', tuxedos, bow ties, I mean, creases in his tuxes and his shirts, they were just so perfect. He was coming down with cops to the dressing room for Elvis to sign for, for people. And he got in the middle of it and he got soaking wet. They didn't mean to get him wet. They didn't mean it, but he got wet. And uh, like I said, craziness, craziness. It went from 
dipping your fingers in the water to sprinkling somebody like this, all the way to water hoses. <laughs> all the way to water, fire hoses. And there was another incident which happened on the 30th floor. And it was my fault. I started it. <laughs> and um, my roommate, Jerry, Jerry Bodie, he and I devised a plan. I says to him, I says, you know what? He says, let's take down the fire hose, which was right next to the uh, elevators and right next to the back door of the 30th floor suite. Let's take down all of the hose and um, you, get the, you get the fire extinguisher. Uh, we'll get one of the guys to come out here. We'll tell them what we're up to. And all our plan was, was for, for, to knock on the door and Ricky Stanley came to the door. We explained to him and he says, oh yeah, 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 do that, do that, do that. So we were just going to run uh, into the 30th floor suite with the fire hose and Jerry with the fire extinguisher. And we were going to say, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. We weren't going to turn the fire hose on. We weren't going to spray them with the uh, fire extinguisher. We were just going to scare them. Well, uh, Ricky opened the door for us. And Jerry and I said, one, two, three, and we started running. And we got past the three bedrooms and past the kitchen and we started uh, uh, going toward the living room area. And um, we were yelling the entire time that we were running. And we said that we're gonna get you wet. Well, Ricky, when he heard us yelling and stuff, he let go of the door. And he wanted to see everything that was going on. So he ran from the back door caught up to us, or uh, was behind us, but little did he remember that the door was on a spring, and it was closing slowly, closing slowly, closing slowly, and finally it, it hit the, the fire hose, which stopped it, and stopped me. I, w I had the hose under my arm like this, <laughs> and it, uh, it just stopped. I went, uh, feet, my feet went up in the air, and boom, I came uh, crashing down on my back and stuff like that. And they were, they were already ready for the escort. So as they started to walk by me, they were all drinking beers, Elvis had his water, some of them had mixed drinks, and I was laying there on my back, and they all went by me, and they all poured their beers, water, Elvis poured his water on me, some of the guys had their mixed drinks, and they poured their mixed drinks on me, and I was laying there going, oh, no, 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 no. And uh, they continued on, they went outside. Well, Jerry, he didn't, he didn't get, uh, wet or anything thrown on him. So he continued with the escort up to the elevators and stuff like that. And I was sitting there and I was reeking of alcohol. And I thought, God, what the hell do I do now? So the escort was already gone. I got up and I'm going like this and I'm going, oh, phew. <laughs> so I went down to the third floor, went over to the uh, uniform room and uh, I had to draw my second uniform. Went uh, over to the security office, put it on, and took the uh, dirty one, the wet one, back to the uh, uh, uniform room. And uh, the uniform mistress, she looked at me and says, what is this, and why does it smell like this? I says, don't ask, <laughs> don't ask, please, don't ask. So I continued down and went over to the stage but like I said, the water thing with these people, it was, uh, it was over the top. They just went crazy with water, anything, any kind of liquid. They had to get uh, themselves wet or other people wet. And 